<laughs> That's true. Why is there somebody else? Oh, I don't have to do it. You know why? Yeah, someone else. Hey, Ira. Hi. How come I don't have an image? I'm just uh, playing with things. I just gave you that. <clears throat> well, now I'm off again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. I see you. You don't see you? No, now you're off. What happened? All right, I got to close the door. Frank. Frank, what happened?
Frank, unmute yourself. Okay. But I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Why? Um... I don't know why. When I pressed the uh, start video, it yes. switched me back. It took me off the line. I'll try it again here. Try it again. There you are. Okay. Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right. So Vicky should be here in a sec. By the way, let me make you a co-host. So are you going to stay on as a host? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, let's see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get some better lighting here. This is uh -huh. okay. You're a little bright, but I'm I'm a little yellow, so. Let's see if that does anything. Okay. That look okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so if you put me on as a co-host, you can do everything. And then you have then then uh, we have to put and Vicky. Vicky'll be a co-host too. So she'll be a co-host too. So she'll take over the uh, the uh, obligation to mute and do all of the. Yeah. And the only thing I don't have is anybody to time. Well, do you have a uh, uh, a phone? Sure. Well, if you look at your phone, you have uh, uh, and clock. There's a timer and a countdown. Yeah, yeah, and I got all that. Yeah. What George does is. He, yeah, I can just hold it up. Yeah, right. Um, uh, I, sometimes I forget to reset it, and then I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be okay. <clears throat> and, and I checked with Freddie and everything as we talked earlier. I'm just going to be real... Uh, Ooh, uh, careful annoying. about the time limits. Yeah, and uh, you know, make that make that a priority this time, as opposed to something that can be. See, and then you just. Yeah. You know, you'll be a little square, but they'll, that's the timer. And then you start again. Uh, Just I have a cancel and a start, so I don't know. And then you can just go cancel when it's over and start. I don't know. Uh, we talked to Freddie about why don't they put a timer, you know, for for yeah, all yeah. businesses and uh, this. Uh, they should have a little clock somewhere, and you can control it. You know. Yeah, he's he had that on his thing. Oh, Vicky's in there. Uh, can you see her? Yeah. So you can do that too, by the way, as co-host. And there's five other people, looks like, online there. Well, there's five people, the three of us and two. Hi, hi, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. You You're can unmute you. yourself. I think we should get Brian or Mike to run the clock the the clock for me tonight. I can do it, but I've got a lot to do. No, no, here. no. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it, or somebody else will. Yeah, yeah. Okay, definitely. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't do that. You'll get. Uh, you'll get. No, there's uh, too much to do. I think, and I think we're going to have quite a few. Ugh. <laughs> 
Nice about the shooting on the boardwalk, huh? Yeah. Another I saw one? that on the news. They actually put it as one of their... Yeah, it was a woman was shot. She and her husband were there, and there are five suspects on the loose up here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're the... Um, um, now, have I been made... Co-hosts. Okay. So how do we get the... So you've got the list. Oh, i got to make you a co-host. Hold on. I thought I did it. All right, yeah. Great, thank you, Ira. Yeah, sure. Okay, now I can see what I need to see. So when we get more folks online, we'll try to grab one of them to do a timer. Yeah. Yeah, it's early yet. Um, I just wanted to make sure everything was in order. Now, could you share your agenda? Frank, Frank can do that. Um, it can um, I can I do that? Is. Uh, let me see. We're going to so, run the meeting. Whoever runs the meeting should uh, share the agenda so you can. So share uh, screen. So do yeah. I press share? Well, you got to put your agenda up. Open it on your home screen. Yeah. Make this small and then go back to your uh, whatever program you have the agenda and open it on the screen. <clears throat> then bring back the meeting. And when you share, push the share screen, you'll see in that square box your agenda. Okay, now I've got it on my screen. Now, if I come back here, right, I push back here on this. Then share screen. Wait a minute, let me. Uh, you the should bottom, see that. Bottom in the middle. Bottom in the middle. What are you talking about? No, no. If the you, share screen is the green thing. It's next to the. When picture. you bring that up, there's a rectangle. No, I got to get you guys back to me. Uh, let me see. How do I do that? Let me see here. Hide video. No. Mute. Stop video. Do you do Exit you see the share line. screen button? Okay, here we go. All right. All right. Now I press share screen. Yeah. And then it has it up there, so I just press on that one. And then, then, then put the share. Yeah, highlight and it and then share. share screen. Okay, now I've got the. Got, got it up here. And you control okay. it with your. Uh... Okay, and I've got the images off to the right. All right. Yeah, as more people get. Uh, yeah. That's it. How do you get all of the images on? Well, I guess you can. Well, really... if you put. Um, gallery view you get as many as you can now with this share screen you lose a lot but you'll see an arrow on the bottom or the top and then you can get a different bunch of people but we don't have enough you'll have <laughs> yeah you need it you need it more and then yeah I, well, I was able to do that i scroll up and down but, yeah uh, yeah okay there are only three of us now, the other thing you don't really need it you see at the top there's a yeah. plus and a minus. You can make this bigger too if, if the uh, uh, type is too, print is too small. Yeah, there's plus, you just hit the plus, yeah. Yeah. Get it bigger. Yeah. Got it, okay. How's that image to you guys, okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes you get a really small print, but that's good. So okay, how well, many motions do you have? Just two. All right. But we have an hour and a half meeting. We'd like to keep it to an hour and a half, assuming we that's, go over. That's all on you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be here just in case, you know, you need help at some point. Hopefully you won't have that other problem with the muting thing. <laughs> yeah, I hope not.
Should we allow a minute on talking, Vicki? What do you Whatever. think? That's Whatever fine. you want. That's fine. I mean, because we're we're keeping the time down pretty tight. Should we make it thirty seconds or? A no, minute? I think a minute. Okay. Fine. So a minute. Well, if you get 150 time. people, maybe you could think about 30 seconds. But other than that, you should be able to do it. Yeah, because I'm only allowing 10 minutes for uh, public comment, and I'm only allowing 10 minutes for public comment on each item, on each motion. Well, see how many people you get. You could, uh, if you have 10 minutes, you should. Uh, uh, that's only 10 people. You could do it 30 seconds and then you get 20 people. Yeah. yeah. Just see how many people you get. Yeah. I mean, because we got presentation from Dexter and I'm allowing. Um, it takes forever, usually. I'm allowing 15 minutes for him. Uh, I tried to get the questions up front for Dexter and I sent them over to him. Mike asked, CJ asked, and. Um, Liz asked. All right. And so I, I sent those over to him. So hopefully Good. we can keep the comments down from the um, from the uh, participants. Hopefully. Now we'll uh, see. Um, once you get a regular a system going, people you know will know they have to submit questions before. Yeah, that's what we were trying to do. We tried it a couple times. It didn't work very good. But... Well, you see, all of this is now experimental. <laughs> yeah. Now, on the, uh, on the uh, um, committee uh, um, discussion, I only allowed 10 minutes, but um, I can play a little looser with that. Just announce beforehand and treat all the people in that category the same. Uh, how do you mean that? In other words, all the panelists have to be treated the same. Then all the attendees within their group have to be treated the same. That's all. Okay. Panelists and attendees can have different time limits. But within each group, you have to treat everybody the same. Well, seeing as we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven um, panelists, uh, that's a minute apiece, and then three minutes for crosstalk. That's well, pretty manageable. Steve, I said you, think, you got, Vicky. Oh, yeah. You may need a little bit more on on both of these motions. I would allow a little bit more crosstalk amongst the committee. Let me see the second motion. You want to just go down? All right, good. I mean, we could cut a little bit of time out in the presentation. You know, we could cut out all the whereases, but I guess we better not. Well, you don't read them. Let, let the people read them. You, you, you don't yeah. have to read them out. Whereases are opinions. They might be true. They might not be true. So, so I should the read. Therefore, this. is the important thing. The, the motion. So, just read the therefore. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does say, uh, you know. Um, well, the therefore the is the motion. the motion. So the therefore would be the motion. That's therefore, the motion. The, the following motion is made. Yeah. Okay. All right, and I'll just state that up front and, too. Uh, <clears throat> we had that discussion about the uh, Lisa Redmond's motion. Are you gonna do that? You don't have to do that, number one. If you want to do it, you do it. If you don't, well, she you can always stand. If you don't choose to do it, bring it to the board. If the committee doesn't hear it. But she didn't have any motion. Well, I thought she wanted to put a homeless committee person on your committee. 
we oh yeah yeah we tried to do that we tried to get some people but there was some um, some problems with people being able to remember you told me i had to have it in three days ahead and i was getting and i had trouble met. getting people well to it's just you have to delegate. have like you have your to go up then to the top you have to have your committee it, it's not necessary three yeah yeah go there you have to have your committee members here, you can't start a meeting and then put four people on the committee. This is your committee for no, this No, no, I got that. I got that. So that's so, all it is. Yeah. You can, yeah, put a, but, you, can, you can put anybody you want. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the, but the, it has the to be on is, the is, yeah, posted right. agenda. Well, let me let Brian in. Brian? Oh, Brian Officer. Yeah, let him in. Practice. All right. You got him in. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, Biggie. You're hey, welcome. Brian. Can you um, can you uh, seeing as you're first up, always can say no. Can you do a timer for uh? There's Dexter. Um, I'm never, I'm never <laughs> done a timer. Well, we'll get. Well, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Hey, folks. Hey, Dexter. Hey, Dexter. I like this Picasso mustache. No Dolly. shit, man. Not Picasso, Dolly. <laughs> you sure that's not one of those uh, things you do on the uh, computer where he can make himself look <laughs> like any of Right. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I can see I actually shaved it a little bit unevenly. I have to take some part of it off, but uh, <laughs> didn't get didn't get around. Now's to that a good fight. time to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that grows in fast. And a curse. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Oh, I like the beret, Ira. Uh, are we waiting for people to come in? We want to start the meeting. We have three minutes. <laughs> We're not. It's not even. I mean, there's no delay. We, we started don't have early. A quorum yet. It's not even six. It's five to six. Yeah. Arg, matey. <laughs> <laughs> the whole community would flip Ira's out if we started our meeting early. <laughs> Let's do parrot talk. We'll we'll conduct the whole meeting in parrot talk. There yeah. you go. Arr. Army, maybe. <laughs> For real? <laughs> when you get the upgraded versions of this, they give you this extra little area you can go in and put like on funny stuff. like how the hat sort of bounces on your head, Ira. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it sort of goes Listen, at least it follows my head. <laughs> Way, Roughly, you're, you're all live broadcasting. Yeah, let's see. Uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's only two. Two. Uh, let's see. If you have, wh what's your quorum? Four. You got it already. So all right, good. So whenever well, you want Dexter to start at seven, on the committee. You oh, we should start have... it. Yeah. We no, Dexter's not on what to say. The sooner you start, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got four. Yeah, Stan, Liz, and CJ. You let Liz Mike. in. Yeah, but Dexter is now. We got a quorum. If Liz is there, we got a quorum. Well, four isn't Brian, Vicky. Oh yeah, you. You need one more, right? I don't count. I can talk and vote. You don't count. I, I don't count as quorum. Well, I guess you do. Oh, no. Oh, I see. No, yeah. no, I don't count as quorum. 
Okay. I can talk and vote. But... Right. Frank, yeah, I was counting. Yeah, so you need CJ, Liz, or Stan. Yeah, Liz, CJ usually comes exactly on time. And so does Liz. So I don't. Oh, Liz is here. Good. I'll let her in. Liz is here. Good. So you got your quorum. So whenever you want. Well, we'll wait till seven. Bye. Yeah. So we have attendees. We have seven attendees. Yeah. That's yeah, good. Taking screenshots of uh, Ira's hat put on street watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it off. I get it accused of clown, it's too, it's clown too late, council Ira. enough. <laughs> it's too late. You've already been seen. <laughs> you're already okay. you're already viral. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Ira, would you hit the record button on this meeting, please? It says recording on mine. It does on mine, too. Oh, OK, good. Thank you. Mine didn't ask me to verify, but it asked me. Oh, it did? OK, good. All right, all right, all right. Let's see here. Hi, Liz. Hi, everybody. Hey, Liz. And I'm going to try. Oh, I'm going to try to be quiet as much as possible. Oh, only if uh, you need some uh, direction or help or whatever. Good luck with that. <clears throat> um, now we've got a stabbing on the boardwalk. It just gets better every hour. We had, we had a shooting at five, wouldn't it? Yeah, now we've had a stabbing at Venice Boulevard and Oceanfront. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's great. All right, well, let's, uh, let's call the order here. So we've got uh, Frank here, Brian here, Liz here, Vicki here. Anybody and uh, more to show up. Yeah, uh, but we can get started now. CJ Cole raised her hand. Where is she? Let's see. I'm looking for her. Here's Stan. Let me let him in. We're getting you in. Okay, so Stan, let me let Mike in. Let me find CJ. What's what does CJ call? She's not under her name. Does she use another? It came up as CJ on mine here. Let me see. Uh, I don't see it. She raised her hand. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. Right? Can you, oh, there's CJ. She's on there. Can you see me? Can you hear me? This mic. Yeah, hi, Mike. Yeah, um, yeah Mike. CJ does not appear on my list. So if you could she let her appears know. on mine. Let me see here. Go her name is on the screen. Oh, she's up here. Okay. She's in. You see her up in participants or yeah. panelists? How did she get that? Okay. okay. Well, she's a panelist, so. Yeah, but we didn't have a panelist link. Oh, okay. She, oh, yeah. We have more people. Oh, yeah, she's up here. I write you. Something's going on. Is everybody hearing the same thing I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Chris came here. I just muted everybody. Still getting some weird interference there. It's Stan. Yeah, where's Stan at? He's uh, on. Yeah, he's in there. But yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Something's wrong with your uh, vi uh, uh, Lots of reverb, Stan. Yeah. Sometimes you have to. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to log out and log in. It happens to a lot. Okay, can I, you want me to get started here? Does everybody, can everybody hear me? Yep, I hear you. Okay, so we've got the call to order. So it looks like um, <clears throat> Frank, Brian, Mike, CJ, Liz, Vicki, and Stan are present. Um, we have the approve the agenda as presented and or amended. Um, I will uh, take a minute here to just stress some points on the uh, agenda. We're going to um, be real strict on the timelines. We have uh, uh, 10 minutes for each 10 minutes for public comment and one minute for each person that talks on public comment. We're going to cut it off after 10 people um, unless, uh, unless there's fewer people and there's time to uh, time left in the 10 minutes. So there's also going to be public comment on each motion, which will be 10 minutes also. We were going to allow a minute for each comment and we'll cut it off at 10 people unless there's time left over in that 10 minutes. Um, as far as the committee discussion, I want to keep everybody keep it brief. There's seven of us. So if we can keep it down to one minute, that'll give us three minutes to clarify stuff before a vote. Um, you know, so let's keep that down to a minimum um, and keep the process going forward. And that's, that's about all I have to say on the agenda is just stressing that we're going to have to keep everything in line. Um, so we need to approve the agenda. Um, I presented it, so does anybody want to second that? Or does it have to be seconded? Who's second? Okay. Uh, anybody uh, uh, Anybody uh, don't want to, uh, that, that's a problem for anybody? Uh, this is Mike. Uh, the the 10 minute limitation uh, on the basis that there's a I, I don't have it in front of me, but there might be 19 or more participants. If so many participants speak to the subject, uh, I would like them pro or con to have the opportunity to discuss, but I think we need to limit the amount of time. So perhaps it would be better if we know how many participants are gonna speak, maybe they need to limit their time to 30 or 40 seconds instead of 60 seconds, but give more people the opportunity to speak, especially when we get down to the two motions. Two motions, yeah. Um, um, 
I think we can do that. I think uh, if people can keep it to 30 seconds, what we'll do is we'll go through the list of people that have raised their hands. We'll take the first, if we make it 30 seconds, um, we'll take the first um, 20 people and we'll stop at the bottom, but when, then we have to be real strict to cut them off at 30 seconds. So keep your points really quick and concise. That way we can get more in. Is that, uh, is that uh, agreeable with everybody? People are not used to expressing themselves in 30 seconds. Okay. They, they have a hard time with a minute. I understand that, but you know, we can't, uh, we're gonna have to be strict on the on the time limits. So, you know, what's your suggestion? Hey, How can Liz, we do that and stay strict? Liz, I hear what you're saying and it makes all kind of good sense. But on the other hand, if there's 20 people who do wanna speak and we limit it to the first 10 who raise their hand, that's not fair to the other latter 10 who weren't quick enough to raise their hand, don't you think? Um, I, I would prefer a, a time limit for raising your hand and then cutting off all the hands after that. Um, well, um, seeing as we're working on it, on it as a time thing, we can, uh, I think we'll, uh, I would like to keep it to a time restraint and uh and we'll just count because it's it's difficult to count the um their <laughs> hands go up in their hands go up in order of when they when they put their hand up so you'll get the first people that put their hand up look uh, we've got 24 attendees at this point why can't we just say like a 20 minute limit minute each and that should accommodate most people some people will just be observing what was your what was your point again uh vicky my point is there are 25 attendees right now so just up the minutes we're going to allow this because we're taking up a ton of minutes right now trying to figure this out yeah, so why don't we just say 25 minutes or 20 minutes of public comment at a minute each and call and that's it all right well um i like vicky's uh, suggestion call the shot frank it's up to you big guy you're the chairman and let's go forward let's play can i say something please sure absolutely um, Okay, um, I, a lot of this also is not just the public public comments, it's us as a board and it's us asking questions of the speaker. And I think we've gotta be very limiting on that. Uh, I don't know if it's so much in the homeless committee, I think it was more in the, the neighborhood council itself board meeting, but you know we've gotta be careful in how much time we take up also. Yes. That's why I was saying if we keep our time concise, why don't we split it five minutes uh, to the committee and five minutes to public and make it 15 and 15. Does that sound uh, good to you guys? No, it's not so much public, I don't mean. I'm talking about just questions. Like we have the presentation from Dexter. If we as a committee continue to ask him questions, it can go on all night. Well, I wanted to make a, a statement about that in the announcements, but uh, I guess we could uh, do that now. Um, we, we are trying to get our questions into Dexter beforehand, which I then forward to Dexter so that he has the questions and we'll, uh, we'll um, um, we can just eliminate the, uh, the um, yeah, Dexter's thumbs up. So we can just eliminate the um, um, back and forth with Dexter. He can do his presentation and answer the specific questions at that time. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. All right, so anybody want to second that with the amended uh, deal that we add another five minutes on each uh, 
motion <clears throat> and add a five minutes to the to the uh, public comment. You don't need to vote on that, Francis. There's, there's you, no you actually no just vote make on the that. Decision. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll add five. So that's 15, 15. All right. And then, uh, and then um, uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, we had two minutes uh, that we needed to do because the minutes got posted too late last time for people to catch them. So the minutes have been up for several days now. Um, are the minutes okay as, as uh, posted? Does anybody object to the minutes? Motion and second. I'll make the motion. I'll so second. Our... Okay, anybody object? No? All right. Uh, announcements, I've already made my announcements. Um, could, could I get who made the motion and who seconded? I, right. think made the mo I made the motion, Brian seconded. Who was who I, Vicky? Vicky. Okay. Thank you. And the chair has already reported. <clears throat> so we're at public comment. Um, on non-agenda. Brian, can you do the clock on the uh, My phone on the isn't, timing? My phone isn't doing it. Can All right, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do Mike, it. Mike, can you do it? I just heard Vicky volunteer. Otherwise, I'll well, know. she's got she's got a lot doing with. Uh, um, well, I can put it up. I Is can there a vote on the approval of the minutes? We already did that. I asked, was there a vote? Nobody objected. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right, I can I can hold up the uh, clock for the uh, for the. Uh, Could you move the agenda up a little bit so we can see what's coming? Yeah. So this is public comment on non-agendized items, um, and we've got fifteen minutes here, so it's fifteen. It's one minute for each person. Um, Vicky, go ahead and start the. Uh, Okay, first hand up is writing. Hi, um, I have a suggestion. Uh, I think that uh, Venice is pretty crowded already with a lot of homeless people. Uh, we are 3.1 square miles with 40,000 plus residents. That's 12,000 uh, uh, people per square mile. The Palisades is 22.84 square miles and has 25,000 residents. That's a thousand people per square mile. Okay, so Venice has 12,000 people per square mile. Palisades has uh, 1,000. Palisades has tons of empty state and federal land available for campsites. Venice has parking lots. Do the math, change the focus. Venice has done its part and is now being taken advantage of by Mr. Bonin who is sheltering the Palisades and putting all the homeless into Venice. And I think that that has to be changed. I think that everybody in CD11 has to take responsibility for the homeless that are here and spread and, and, and have everybody in CD11 help out, not just Venice. We have 50 Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Eva. Uh, next up is Daryl Dufay. Jesus. Who's doing that noise? Fuck. Daryl, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, now I see my name up. I have a question to ask. How long is there? How long is our meeting supposed to be? <laughs> I think they're just whatever we put them up for. I don't. I didn't know there was a time restraint. There is. I. I I'm just making a general com comment. I'm. I. I can't even hardly talk because I can't believe what you're doing. We have people so interested in all of these questions. And it takes you a half an hour to start the program and then about 45 minutes to, to stop it. I really wish you would look at 
at how you are planning your meetings. Um, I want to be part of it, but the way they're set up now, it, it's in, it's just impossible. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Next up is Cadillac. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, just uh, wanted to say hello. Another meeting of the uh, Los Angeles's most sadistic uh, neighborhood councils and their most hateful subcommittee. So hello to all you folks uh, on the committee. Uh, also, hey, Eva Braun Green, if you're gonna call in and talk about relocating unhoused people, use your real name, Slime. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you, Cadillac. Next, we have um, Amber. Hi there. Just like Cadillac said, uh, Eva, your voice is very distinct. Um, we can recognize you. We can hear you also to this board. Um, kind of what the second caller said, listen, we all spent the last 15 minutes listening to you all try to figure out how to manage this meeting so that and best organize it so that you would avoid uh, your own discomfort. So you would not have to deal with people calling in, cursing, complaining. You all have built basically a triage for this meeting out of fear, which is great. But imagine having real, real discomfort, like being homeless, like having real fear, like being swept and moved as you sleep at night. You guys have literally existed in a bubble and we can tell you have no homeless representation on this board in this committee and we can tell because you're too steeped in your own privilege and comfort to even start this meeting on time because you're scared of hearing something bad. Imagine having something bad happen to you consistently daily. That's what the life is like of the homeless up. Thank you, Amber. That is the life of the people you're trying to exterminate and you can't still. Uh, next up is Helen Fallon, please. Um, I'm on? Okay. Um, two things. One, um, I understand that Mr. Bonin a while back made a motion about getting rat proof trash. Because I'm muted. I don't know. Okay. Am I on? You're on now, Helen. Okay. I don't know what's going on with this thing because my screen says I'm muted. Okay. Um, the, Mr. Bonin made a, a proposal about having rat proof trash cans for um, the homeless encampments, I think around third. And apparently that's never happened. I mean, if, I haven't checked to see whether that motion was approved, but he, his office apparently took the initiative. I think it'd be nice if perhaps the homeless committee followed up on that because it would be a good idea to have rat food trash cans available when we have a lot of rats in this area. And the second thing is, I don't understand why people feel that they need to insult other speakers when they speak. Uh, it's just, it's very offensive. There's gotta be some Thank parents you, somewhere who's shamed and embarrassed. Thank you. Next up is Erica Venice Beach. Hi, this is Erica. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. I just want to thank you guys for your service and echo that I too feel very disconcerted when people come on this forum and are just rude and disrespectful. We can agree to disagree and have an intelligent conversation. That's what this is for. And even though things aren't maybe, maybe uh, handled perfectly, I, I just think that it's very disheartening and last uh, meeting was so disturbing for me because somebody was taking my identity and saying very hateful rude things and I just want you to know I think I have a pretty distinctive voice so if you hear somebody doing that to me again tonight please know it's not me I don't speak that way and I do appreciate your service thank you thanks Erica uh, hold on Uh, 
Uh, next up is Carol, Carol Raines. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, yes, thank you for your service. And I do want to suggest that you have this housekeeping stuff figured out prior to the call so we don't waste the first 15 minutes um, figuring that stuff out. But I do want to say for these people who keep coming on our calls and saying that we're hateful, Venice does more for homeless than any other CD11 community. And I'm wondering if you guys are also crashing Pacific Palisades and Brentwood and uh, Playa Del Rey and Playa Vista and Westchester's calls, because honestly, that's where you should be. I also wish that there were some way, frankly, to eliminate um, comments or uh, people being able to comment who are not Venice stakeholders. Um, so we know that you guys are calling from all over the place and, uh, and then you're incredibly disrespectful, frankly, and you're, vi you're vile and vulgar and there's just no need or room for that. We can all talk respectfully. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, next up is Lisa Redman. Hi, good evening. Uh, well, Carol led right into my first point um, is that she can speak respectfully, but your words can be mean. And every single person that you think is not a Venice stakeholder is a Venice stakeholder. People don't have to live here or work here or own here. All of those people volunteer here. They are working with the unhoused people more than most people. And Carol takes too much credit for everything nice that's happening to Venice unhoused, but it's not true. But I mostly wanna speak as to why I put in a motion that was voted on in September to have an unhoused person on the committee. And now this is the third month in a row where that person isn't there. It's unbelievable that we have housed people making judgment on unhoused people without the voice from somebody who is part of that community. Um, let's get it together and get that person on your committee. You can get a brand new committee member here tonight, but you still haven't gotten an unhoused person. Please get that taken care of. ASAP. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Next up is Nick Antoncelli. Yeah, it's really uh, the bizarro world of uh, Venice, where now we want homeless people who can't even make decisions for themselves. Most of them are alcoholics and drug addicts. Most of them are mentally uh, unstable and we're going to have them fix the homeless problem that's that's a great idea that's kind of like uh, an employer not being able to tell an employee how to run his company or how to do their job it, this has gotten so out of control the bottom line is this is that mike bonnie who makes three hundred thousand dollars a year as a councilman makes more money than half the governors of the united states makes more money than diane feinstein kamala harris joe biden mike pence he is at the core of the problem of homelessness. He's done nothing in his 10 years on the council as either chief of staff or counselor. And that's the truth. And this is something that these people who come on these calls, who are not stakeholders, don't want to acknowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Next up is Sean O'Brien. Please support this, uh, this. Don, we can't hear you. Sean, something's wrong with you. Please support this, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, next is Bianca C. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Thanks. Thanks for having this committee meeting. I'm a Venice stakeholder. I work in Venice. And I just wanted to invite the committee to reflect on what we've heard comments from before, basically dehumanizing all homeless people, especially those in Venice. Um, the attitude, especially with the Palisades, you know, woe is me. The Palisades don't have unhoused people, whereas we do. Like, what kind of attitude is that? 
there needs to be more respect paid to homeless people who thank you, Nick, for that generous description of them. It's just really frustrating, really honestly sad to hear how people see their neighbors in their community. I yield my time. Thank you. Uh, next up is Christine Kay. I agree. I think it's sick that all these secret people are calling in, hidden cowards, these people who should not even be calling in, people like Eva who have motions on this agenda, calling in secretly, her best friend Helen, Carol who uses words like eliminate, kind of like a Nazi. Also newsflash, you're not even in the Pacific Palisades or even close. You're in Venice, crisis. Sean, while you're at it, sober up. You guys do not at all belong in this community. I yield my time. Thank you, Christine. I believe that's it for public comment on non-agendized items. Okay. Um, well, there's one Dexter. more that just raised their hand. You can't keep doing that. Okay. One more? Sure. Marie, Marie Hammond. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering what's going to happen because at the uh, CD11 town hall meeting, uh, Police Chief Moore uh, said that uh, the police are not going to be as involved with the homeless and that he's turning it over to St. Joseph's. And I would like to know, uh, I think uh, we should all know what the protocol is going to be, what we should call about, who we should call. And um, St. Joseph's is closed evenings, weekends, and holidays. So I'm just curious as to uh, what the protocol is going to be for Venice residents, if you have an issue and what kind of an issue you should call who for. And I think uh, it's very important that somebody uh, has some type of a town hall for us, letting us know uh, what, what the situation is now, because things have changed. Thank you, Marie. And that's the last public comment in that section. All right. Um, so we've moved ahead here to uh, Dexter. Um, again, uh, we're gonna keep the uh, questions down to a minimum because Dexter got questions prior to the meeting. Um, so interaction there, let's keep the time. He's got about 15 minutes, 15. Uh, so Dexter, hit it. Absolutely, Frank, thank you. Thanks, Frank. Um, it is as always a pleasure to appear before this committee, even though this time I'm doing it from indoors. Um, Members of the public and members of the committee, as always, uh, my email address is my first name, dot my last name, Dexter.O'Connell, but no apostrophe in my email. So just O-C-O-N-N-E-L-L, Dexter.O'Connell at lacity.org. Please don't hesitate to reach out directly to me with any questions or concerns that you might have. Um, or things that you would like me to address at the next uh, meeting of this committee. And I'll segue right into the things that I was sent to address at this meeting of the committee. Um, there was a question, three members of the committee sent me uh, emails and no members of the public um, for things to bring up. So I am appreciative of the folks who did and I look forward to receiving more emails next month. Um, there was a question requesting my phone number uh, my phone number is in my email signature. It's 213-468-2276. Um, obviously, please don't text me at 3 a.m. I'm not the president and will not answer, although I can't imagine the current president would either. Um, <laughs> January 20th. Um, so uh, that's that, but please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I'll say that again. Um, don't wanna sound like a used car salesman. So I'll only say it one more time. It's 213-468-2276. Please don't hesitate um, to feel, feel free to, to use that. Um, uh, there was a question that said, how many folks observe Thursday cleanups um, and is opposition based on prior or current methods? Um, so I'd say this, generally observation by advocacy organizations varies between one and five people. 
observation by interested housed neighbors varies as well. Um, it's usually zero, but occasionally one or two. Um, obviously, many of our unhoused neighbors are observing the cleanup on the regular basis as well as participating. Um, I'm usually the only member of city staff there observing uh, who's not from the Bureau of Sanitation and participating, but sometimes there are more, usually from CD11. Um, I'm not quite sure what we mean by opposition, but I'm familiar with opposition to the sweeps practiced in certain parts of the city, which are not currently practiced here in, um, in Venice in the special enforcement zone. Um, instead, a, a voluntary cleanup protocol is being used. Um, and I would invite anyone who'd like to, to watch that in action to please feel free to come out to the cleanups. Um, every Thursday morning, uh, 7.30 at 3rd and Rose. Um, the question, what do you see that the homeless committee can do or provide that would contribute to getting those currently unhoused into housing? Um, and that, that for me is really, uh, it's a complicated question, but also it's a simple one, right? What's, what's the thing that you can most do to provide housing? Well, you can provide housing. And so what the Homelessness Committee can do is organize to advocate for more housing, um, you know, support proposed housing projects that increase the number of residential units, um, contact city planning staff and our office's planning staff to encourage upzoning for more residential density, um, organize citywide to encourage the city's renewable housing needs assessment uh, goal to be to be doubled. Um, Frank Murphy knows this issue really well. He's done a lot of good work, uh, particularly on the RENA issue. And uh, if you're a member of the committee interested in that particular aspect, you should reach out to him. Um, Council Member Bonin also is a supporter of the Homes Guarantee LA legislation package. I recommend that you look into that on the website and advocate for those issues. Um, and as important as housing those who are unhoused right now is keeping folks in housing. The best way to prevent homelessness is to help keep folks in housing. Um, and <clears throat> so the committee could resolve in support of council member Bonin and council member elect Raman's uh, positions on rent cancellation and eviction protection, for example, um, as well as work that's been done by council member Harris Dawson on, on those issues. Um, so those are just some examples. And the, then comes the question, what do you see the homeless committee can do or provide that would make folks' lives better right now? Um, and so right now I'd said defer to the organizations which are doing the, the on the ground work right now, um, frankly, which is you know, our, our um, advocacy organizations who are out on the street. You know, um, it's, it's K-Town for All, it's Venice Catholic Worker, um, the St. Joseph Center, who are in regular communication with people on the streets about their immediate needs. Now, I reached out to some of these organizations um, in helping me answer this question, and the folks, the, the, the things that I've heard most are tents, particularly tents that will meet ADA requirements on our sidewalks in Venice, um, blankets, socks, sleeping bags, um, things like that. Uh, those are those are things which are most needed right now. Um, and so if, if you're interested, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I can put you in touch with an advocacy organization who's doing you know the, the work of bringing these items to folks who are in need of them on the streets. And I'd, I'd be happy to coordinate that. Um, another question came in asking uh, how to arrange a meeting with council member Bonin. Please email me and I will um, put that on the grid and bring that to att the attention of council member Bonin's scheduler, uh, Martha, who's a fantastic human being um, and manages an incredible, um, incredible amount of work in, in um, really a special way. She's, she's a fantastic person and she does a tremendous job. Um, so yeah, email me uh, if you'd like to, to meet and discuss these issues with council member Vaughn and I can bring that to his attention. What I'd ask is that um, you send the specific details of what you're interested in discussing with him so that I can relay that information forward. Um, what I would also uh, say about that is that, you know, he's, he's interested in hearing from you. So, um, you know, but it's, it's also my job to communicate things to him. So please don't hesitate. I will be happy to meet with anyone. Um, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm, I'm more than happy to meet and discuss this issue um, as several members of the committee have done already. And I thank those of you that have. It's been, it's been a genuine pleasure and I hope it continues. Um, 
And so uh, the, the next question, have there been any COVID cases at the bridge home? Um, how often are bridge home residents tested? Are they supplied with masks? Um, and so I'll take that in opposite order. Residents are supplied with masks. They're regularly reminded to wear them, particularly in indoor spaces. They're required to wear them when meeting with their, their caseworkers um, or administrative staff in, in an indoor space. Um, but uh, you know, the bridge home is their home and that does make the issue somewhat more complicated. Um, Staff, however, are required to wear masks. And after an incident last uh, last week, staff have been uh, explicitly reminded of that um, by by both their bosses and by me personally. Um, now, uh, testing occurs regularly both on site and through LAFD mobile testing. There have been no cases yet, and you can hear me knocking on wood in the background. Um, Two folks who had some symptoms and were transferred to the quarantine site later tested negative um, and were fortunate to have a uh, quarantine bungalow on site as part of the uh, decompression so that folks can be isolated as quickly as possible if they're showing symptoms. Uh, but like I said, knock wood, no cases yet. Um, one issue which has come up among that, uh, that, that thing is that medical advice um, from, from some of the doctors and nurses who are out in the community and, and come into the bridge home is that the bridge home should actually be ventilated more than the three times a day, which it's currently being ventilated. Um, I know there have been some issues related to that, uh, but the, the medical advice is coming in and requesting that we increase the ventilation schedule. Um, and so we may, uh, we may look to be in touch with the community about that also. Um, I know how loud it is. Um, I, I am familiar with it. Um, okay, and the last question that I received is what is the current population? How many new residents in November? How many left? And how many of those went to homes? Um, so the adult population is at 72 on site and five in Project Room Key. The maximum number right now that they're allowed is 74. Um, the youth is at 44, that's from a maximum number of 46 that's allowed right now. Um, and what I would say is that I've been in contact with the mayor's office about uh, what's called a recompression visit. Um, I visited the bridge home in San Pedro and the bridge home in Wilmington. And both of those, the adult side of the bridge home is physically configured the same way that the adult side of the bridge home is in Venice, 100 beds. And recompression has allowed both of those facilities to go up to 93 beds. Um, and so I am hopeful that we can get the mayor's office and the health department out to Venice um, to get those additional approximately 20 beds, because um, that's 20 people we can get off the street and into a nice warm place with, with showers and services. Um, so I'm trying to make that happen as quickly as possible. That got delayed. Um, and I am trying to make sure that that delay does not turn into a long-term delay. Um, in terms of housing, there were three youth and two adults housed in November. There were two youth who were dismissed or left the program and three adults who were dismissed and left the program. Um, one of those folks was dismissed. Uh, there, there was, I know I'd been saying, there'd been no crime in the bridge home since September. Um, there was an incident of vandalism um, where one individual um, uh, smashed the, the windshield of the vehicle of another bridge home resident with a boulder. Um, and that individual was dismissed from the program for the vandalism, um, which is an unfortunate circumstance. Um, but uh, again, inside the bridge home, things are, things are going um, extremely safely and extremely well. Um, and I don't think that that one incident um, is, is taking away from how well folks are doing there. Um, and uh, speaking of housing, we have a partnership between uh, a shared housing provider called SHARE um, with an exclamation point at the end. It's very exciting. Um, and PATH on the adult side. And then we have a partnership that's forming with another shared housing provider um, and SPY on the youth side. And so we're, um, we're really trying to get those shared housing partnerships going. Um, and I know Brian uh, has, has really been a great um, resource for that. His organization has, has done a spectacular job with that. 
uh, and we're we're really hopeful that that's going to continue. Um, I do also want to address one thing that came up in the public comment, which I'm I'm familiar with, which is the issue of the rat proof cans. Um, that motion did pass; it is there, um, and the the funding is being held on it for some reason. Councilmember Bonin has been trying to track down these rat proof cans for uh, quite some time now. It's very important to our office that those be deployed as rapidly as possible, and it's very frustrating. I, I have a message from the council member, in fact, on my phone tonight about how frustrated he is that the rat proof cans have not been deployed yet. Um, so I, I share the frustration of the person who asked about the rat proof cans um, and council member Bonin does as well. Um, and so that covers what I had to say tonight. I deeply appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to y'all and I hope that I did not take too much of your time. No, that was, uh, that was, uh very concise, very quick. Um, all right, let's move on. Thank you, Dexter. And it looks like all the questions got uh, answered and we'll get more concise with our questions and, uh, and hopefully uh, keep rolling. Yeah, and like I, like I said, Frank, I'm more than happy to answer questions that folks have in between the meetings. Also, just send me an email and I'm, I'm happy to meet or to answer specific questions as best I can. So appreciate that, man. Yeah. Appreciate thank that. You, thank you. Thank very you much. to all of you. Thanks, Dexter. Like your beer. You, you must thank have. You. <laughs> thank you. You used to have a beer, man. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was time for a change. I got to fit an N95 mask over it. So, <laughs> right. an N95 so you have to trim it a little bit more. Yeah, okay, that's, that's good, right, good. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Good Good night, you all. Be good to yourselves now. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Dexter. Okay, audience also. All right. We're moving on to uh, the first motion for the evening. Um, there won't be any questions from the public for Dexter. Uh, but if you get questions into us, uh, we can we can incorporate that into the questions that will feed Dexter prior to the meeting. So if you have questions, please get them in, um, get them in ahead of ahead of the meeting and we'll get it into Dexter because he needs time to uh, sort out uh, the answer. Um, motion one. Um, just a quick comment from me. I'm going to read the, from the therefore down, that's the reading of the text of the motion. The motion is what we're requesting of the Venice Neighborhood Council and what they're, we're asking them to do. So please read the motion um, uh, as it's printed on here in order to get the whereases and the, uh, and the uh, explanations up front uh, when you ask your questions after the, when you have public comments. So I'll read in from the, therefore be it resolved, this is motion one calling for monthly cleaning of all encampments in Venice submitted by Ava Green. Therefore, be it resolved, the Venice Neighborhood Council calls upon the City of Los Angeles and its Sanitation Department to help keep the homeless encampments clean and as sanitary as possible for human conditions to prevail and to prevent diseases due to rodents attracted to open food sources and asks that the city provide rat-proof trash cans at all encampments of 10 or more people and calls for the cleaning of all homeless encampments in Venice one time a month, including the temporary shifting of all possessions, tents, furniture, et cetera, to allow thorough cleaning of sidewalks, parkways, and any other public areas because the homeless deserve to keep their encampments as sanitary as possible while keeping their location site, while keeping their location sites. So upon passage, this resolution shall be forwarded to Mayor Eric Carsetti, Councilman Bonin, uh, President of the Board of Public Works, Kevin James, Department of Sanitation, General Manager Enrique Zaldivar, and the entire City Council. 
so that is the what we are working on right now. So we, I, uh, who wants to make the motion? I read it in. I'll, I'll make the motion. CJ makes the motion. Okay, right. I got um... Anybody second? I'll second. Second Mr. is right. Let's go to public comment. We're going to take 15 minutes. The it's stated here 10 minutes. Um, um, what we changed that at the uh, uh, at the start of the meeting. So let's do uh, okay. 15 minutes, a minute apiece, and nine participants have their hands raised. So right now, if you cut it off, if 10 people have their hands raised, we can give them 11 people, 12 people. Okay, let's cut it off there. And then- um, The last thinking. one, yeah, okay. The last one is Mark. Um, first up is Eva writing. Hi, I like that Dexter said that the city councilman has already been trying to get rat proof trash cans. Yay, that's part of what I have here. Uh, so that's really fantastic. So I don't see how that can be argued against. Uh, but I do wanna say that it's the city council and county supervisors that hold the purse strings to housing the homeless. So let me repeat that. The city council and county supervisors hold the purse strings to housing the homeless. What this motion does is help the homeless keep their areas as clean as possible and free of rats. Are you really for keeping the homeless in filthy rat infested conditions? As many of the people who have commented on seem to want, I don't get it. The homeless on the streets, this is caused by the lack of incentive by our city and county leaders. Put the blame where the blame lies. We voted over and over again with our tax dollars to help the homeless. So quit trying to bully and shame us with your lies that we hate the homeless because the propositions we voted for to help the homeless tell another story. Prop two, Prop HHH, Prop H, federal project for room key, for project That's room one key. minute. Thank you, Eva. Next up is a phone number ending in 405. You'll have Can you to- unmute? Or Hello? Yes. Okay. Hello? Yes, hi. So my name is uh, Sarah, and I'm looking directly to speak to you, Frank Murphy, and the entire Venice Homeless Committee, including Dexter, Nisa, and Mike Bonin. You guys have desperately failed everyone. And don't cut me off at one minute, because I have been emailing all of you guys and posting publicly since June 28th. Your system is broken. You don't have services. You guys barely got me housing for one young man after I had to publicly basically shame you guys about your lies. I don't wanna hear the system is broken anymore, Mr. Murphy. I don't wanna hear Brian Olf say he has to skip agenda items to go to his dinner reservations in the middle of a pandemic. I want accountability from you guys now. Bonin, Nisa, and Dexter, you guys all know that we need a bigger plan to go into Garcetti's office. Okay. Just one minute. And don't cut me off. Five. Next up is Cadillac. Hi there. You hear me? Yes. Okay. So Kevin laid out what you guys should be doing what this committee should be up to. You should be petitioning the city for public housing, for reclaiming vacant hotels. He also said, and I'm sure this really hurt the feeling of the Nazis like Staten Island Nick and Carol Trail of Tears uh, caller before, he said you should be listening to the organizations on the ground helping these people like K-Town for All, Venice Catholic Worker, uh, you know, Street Watch. That's who you should be working with. That's what this committee should be doing, not trying to pass Eva Braun Greene's, you know, torture uh, motions here. No one was disputing the rap proof trash cans were a good idea, but the rest of it goes against CDC guidelines, Eva. 
So can it with that stuff. We know where the money is, but your job is to advise. So give good advice and advice for public housing and services, not suites. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Venetian. Venetian, are you there? Mm, seems to have gone away. Next up then is Helen Fallon. Yes. Um, the encampments need to be kept clean. And anyone who says that they should be left filthy must not even bother to clean their own home if they're housed. We heard during the board, the last board meeting about how a comprehensive cleanup works. It's not a sweep. It's not, it, they appear to not being disrupting people. They're doing it block by block. They give plenty of advanced warning. So all these people are concerned about people losing things have plenty of time to help the disorganized, get their things organized so they can move them and not lose things. It doesn't go against CDC guidelines. In fact, they, they go out there and do testing, they said during these comprehensive cleanups. Once a month, frankly, I don't think it's sufficient. I think it should at least be twice a month at, the, at a minimum, but at least do it once a month so that people aren't exposed to all the pathogens that are that are there when you, Thank you Helen. don't keep things clean. Thank you, Helen. Next up is Peter Klune. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, back to some of the previous callers said, um, you know, Dexter put forward a lot of productive options that you guys could be pursuing. Um, and it's unfortunate to instead be talking about this motion which sort of has this pretense of being helpful and wanting to provide cleanliness, um, but sort of can't even have a thick enough veneer to cover the fact that it differentiates between residents and the homeless. Like our unhoused neighbors are our neighbors. They are residents as well. Um, like this is not a, a serious motion. It doesn't come from a serious place of concern or empathy or understanding for what's happening. And you guys shouldn't treat it seriously. Um, I mean, Eva keeps submitting these um, and like they, they keep sort of trying to inch towards being acceptable, but none of them are because they all clearly come from a place that seeks, you know, displacement. Uh, and it's, it's just disappointing to have to- One minute. Thank you, Peter. Um, next up, Erica Venice-Beach. Hi, this is Erica. Um, I am in support of this motion because this isn't about displacing homeless people. This is about giving them some aid so that their area can be sanitized and they can resume and be in that area. Um, it's not to anybody's advantage, not to the homelesses or the residents, for there to be any, uh, you know, trash everywhere and, <clears throat> you know, excessive vermin, et cetera. I think it's everybody's human right to have a bathroom. And I also think that there should be portable showers as well. I think that would be really helpful. Unfortunately, what I witnessed is that the portable hand washing stations that were uh, put up on rows were often uh, damaged and destroyed, which really made me sad because those are needed by those people. They need a source of running water. Uh, to help keep things clean for themselves as well. So I am in support of this motion and um, hope that people can see that the spirit of what this motion is, is for something to help the community, not hurt it. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Uh, Nick. Yeah, my, my comments are that homelessness is a condition that needs to be eliminated. And it, 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 it's really funny, these so-called the not-for-profit bureaucrats that you know, clog the lines here never talk about how we get these people to permanent housing. This is an advisory committee. And quite frankly, how do you sanitize encampments? How does one even do that? How do you sanitize a slump? Homelessness is a condition that needs to be changed, and that means getting them inside in permanent housing. And Mike Bonin has failed miserably 
in that channel. And it's something, once again, that these people just don't want to hear because it's the truth. Thank you, Nick. Next up, Lisa Redman. Hi, good evening again. Um, well, I'm sure you. Lisa? Sorry, Lisa, something happened there. All right. I start again. You yeah, pull minute. Start again. Sure. Uh, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that this is coming in front of us again, and even more so that you all believe the load of crap that was given to you last month by Biscano's uh, deputy. There are already showers that come. There are already services, but how they project it in other areas is either take a shower or have your shit thrown away. That's a pretty tough decision to have to choose between. We are successfully, as Dexter pointed out, doing comprehensive cleanups without moving people. And again, everyone is welcome to come down on a Thursday morning and see for themselves how there are porta potties, how it is clean, how the sinks are maintained, how the showers are there, and how we can do it without disrupting people and people voluntarily give up trash, move their tents for power washing. If you close down streets, where do these people go? When we used to have sweeps, you, everybody moved up minute, by Lisa. Jimmy Page. Um, next up, uh, the real Erica from Venice Beach. Thank you. Dexter clearly detailed what's going on. Eva, in this motion, you it shows you obviously have a very good understanding of what the bureaucratic process is what taxes we've paid, what work's not being done by the city, but there are unfortunately too many NIMBYs who are calling in who can't hide their anger and wanton need for the extermination of homeless people. Nick just said it, Carol said it. You guys cannot vacuum them away. The campments need to be clean, as Helen said, great. So Helen, clean them. The mutual aid groups you guys hate so much are the ones who are stepping in to do it, compassionately. Feel free to do it. Get off your West Elm couch, and do it, join them. The fact is that on paper, one clean a month sounds great. However, the city has no template being able to clean these encampments compassionately. It doesn't involve a full police presence, okay? The city can provide restrooms and water stations, but the city that needs to be able to maintain them, force your city to maintain them. Also, Nick is a Nazi. He speaks to the mentally ill as if you Thank guys- Thank you, Real Erica. Um, there was one more person uh, who seems to have dropped off. So we can either take, there are several more people with their hands up. What would you all like to do? There's four people with raised hands. You want to take the four? Sure. Okay. Um, next up will be Bianca. Hi, yeah, I want to echo what the real Erica and Lisa both said. And I want to ask Ava and Helen and Carol and all the folks with these strong opinions, have you worked with any unhoused people? Have you been out on the streets when the sweeps happen? Have you, what experience do you have to talk about these people in these pretty degrading motions to say they deserve these things and whatever, but you're not offering what they're asking for. You're not out with street watch. You're not with these aid groups on the streets to know what the problems are and to know how to acknowledge and truly support these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. Uh, disabled talking. Next is Mary Ruska. Hello. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, we can oh, hear. Thank, thank you. Um, I would like to urge you to pass these motions. They harm no one. Additionally, I'd like to throw out there that we start engaging our elected officials on addressing the root cause of what's going on on our streets, which are Lantram and Petra Short, Reese versus St. Mary's Hospital, and Prop 47. Um, appeal, uh, amending, repealing, overturning them should be something we start talking about because we need to address the root causes and 75% or more 
but 75% has been documented of the homeless require mental health services and substance abuse services. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, next up is Venetian. 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 Okay. Um, Go on to the next one. Um, Mark Galanti. Mark. Uh, you got to click the unmute. Okay. So I want to appreciate, uh, send my appreciation for all the people that are here on behalf of the unhomed and this committee is there and all the phone calls and uh, people that have been calling in. Um, it's much appreciated. I'm so happy. There's so many people that are working on behalf of the unhomed. I, I just don't understand why this, this motion is so problematic. I, I think maintaining uh, clean areas at least once a month if not more would be would be good for the unhomed as well as the neighborhoods they're in and i would hope that those that are calling in would 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 have to see that for the unhomed so i just hope they'll continue to work on behalf of making lives better for those on the streets and i think this motion should be supported because i think it only helps uh everybody so uh, thank you thank you mark uh daryl dufay Darryl. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the motion. I appreciate Eva's work. But when I look at that, I don't know why the motion doesn't focus on what is being done right now for Venice. Last, last time, Dennis Gleason did a great job of presentation. He also sent me the LA Sanitation and Environmental Report which is based on all of the work that they're doing, CARE. It stands for Cleaning and Rapid Engagement. There is a dedicated CARE Plus, that's comprehensive, dedicated to Venice. There are three CARE groups ded dedicated to Venice. I would have hoped that this would have had what is being done now and that the motion would be directed at what more needs to be done or what is not being done right now. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, next up is Mr. Goat Puppet. This is the last, this is the last one. Go ahead. Hello? I'm, yes. Uh, can you hear me now? I got muted on accidentally. Well, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, Mr. Kevin James is no longer the president of the Board of Public Works. It's called, his name is Michael Good. We call him Michael Bad. So, please make that editorial change. Now, as far as this cleanup thing, the biggest advocate is the great Joe Buscaino, one of the most popular figures in Venice, California today. We call him Joey Buckets. So please get the help of Joey Buckets, AKA the great Joe Buscaino, clean the streets, clean the urine, and let's all get back to Thanks, having- Thanks, Mr. Food. Puppet. Okay, is that the last one? I mean, there's several That's, more. I mean, I. You can. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to cut it off, Frank. Whenever. No, that's that's a we've had uh, we've gone over our uh, time allotted um, by a bit, and uh, we have to get to uh, committee discussion. So let's uh, commence with that. Um, We've got 15 minutes. Um, you know, let's uh, 
Well, let's uh, wage in. Who would like to talk first? I'm happy to start. This is Mike. Okay, Mike. Keep this it to a minimum so we can get through everybody. Thank you. This motion needs to be defeated uh, for among other reasons. I have three very quickly. Number one, this motion seeks to mandatorily remove all tents uh, when some tents do not need to be moved because they are either not rodent infected, they may not, they might be newly placed on a sidewalk and they might be clean. Number two, let us leave it to the LA Sanitation Department to determine if and when a tent encampment needs to be clean. It turns out in Venice that the Sanitation Department is already doing its work. The protocol is now working in Venice. The sanitation department has permission to move the tenants. Several tent residents voluntarily move and the surroundings are power washed. They don't lose the property. Their trash mm -hmm. is not thrown away. They have time to move their possessions. Number three, moving tents. And this is exactly what this motion is is the sweep, but moving the tents can be destructive, costly, inhumane, and increases the potential for infection diseases to spread. We volunteers on this homeless committee need to defer to the CDC and not attempt to set aside its guidelines. Thank you. I'll speak. Um, all I want to say is that I do think that this is beneficial to everybody. Um, if the city wanted to give me house click house free house cleaning once a month, I would absolutely love it. Um, and I'm in favor of this motion. Thank you. What a nice lady. So I'll speak, Frank. I think um, first I want to say it's an honor for me to even be with you guys on this committee as a volunteer. I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job having a, a phenomenal conversation around the unhoused. Uh, being out there on the street practically every day and looking at what I, what I see every day, anything that we can do to uh, not only uh, help clean up the encampments, uh, but having conversations and engaging the unhoused population in, in this process would be beneficial. I have ran across several unhoused individuals who was willing to come on board to help clean their own areas. So I think if we get this motion uh, passed and get it up to the v, the Venice Neighborhood Council, we should identify uh, some of the individuals who is uh, in the encampments and, and, and empower them. Not only to, to clean up once a month, but clean up every day, because ultimately this is they this is their house and this is where they live. So uh, I'm going to be in favor of, of the motion. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that I don't agree with all aspects of this motion, um, nor do I agree with a completely hands-off approach. My hope is that if, if something like this does get sent to the city from the VNC, that somehow sanitation and everybody involved in cleanups will take a fresh look at it. I think some cleanup really needs to be done for um, the people on the streets. It, it needs to be done. And we have to find a happy medium or not a happy medium, but some way that the city can help this. And I don't agree that, that sanitation is maybe doing it the right way. I think some new ways need to be found and it's only by putting through motions like this and letting the city think about it that we might get something new that works better. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah, I, I would like to speak. Um, I, I listened very carefully to the whole thing and there was so much discussion, but I heard only one person say, don't do the cleaning. Most of it was arguments about why people were saying they wanted it cleaned or 
uh, the benefits, but nobody said, if you clean, that's really bad. So I'm, I'm going to vote for it. I definitely am. And as time passes, I'm sure that the Department of Sanitation will revise what it does uh, as it sees ways to improve. Are you finished, Liz? I am. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Stan to the committee, buddy. Thank you for joining us. Um, you are out on the street every day, and uh, it's been fun being out there with you from time to time. So uh, well, welcome aboard. Um, I, I believe in what you said. I believe a lot of what Vicki said. Um, you know, I we, we have to keep the streets clean because, I mean, it's just filth. And I don't understand why we don't want to help the homeless keep their areas clean. And, and that's, that's the big dilemma with the groups that are calling in. We can't you know, move the people out. I'm not sure the CDC guidelines were set up uh, when people can actually leave the tent. I mean, the CDC guidelines says you don't disrupt the tent because this person's supposed to stay in there during COVID. Um, I could be wrong and I, and I apologize if I am, but to, to me, that's, that's what it says. Uh, we don't want anybody to, to get the disease. We don't want anybody to, to be displaced. We don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to steal their personal private stuff, um, but we have to clean the street. We just have to clean around the streets. Um, and I think it's very inhumane um, to not do it. So I would vote for it. I would also suggest that we add Sheila Kuehl to this distribution list or the county supervisors as a group, because they are the money. You know, when Bonin needed to move the encampment on Penmar, he got the money from them. Uh, Sheila Kuehl right now is helping us keep the project room key uh, open in Venice. Anyway, my comments and I'm supporting it. Frank? I wanna go ahead. No, I'm back to you. I just wanted to uh, uh, thank Stan too for uh, joining the committee because uh, we had talked about this for quite a while and uh, I appreciate him uh, putting his time in. Um, um, I'm also for this. I, I, uh, I really would like to hear, I would like to, uh, implement what Stan is, is talking about also is that uh, not only do you get the one month uh, uh, deep cleaning, if you would like to say that, uh, but you also get the uh, ongoing uh, maintaining it in, on an ongoing basis with some uh, folks that are living there. And that's a really good, uh, I think a really good possibility and uh, and um, so I'm 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 for the I'm for this also uh, for those reasons. Um, I don't think that the uh, uh, to to uh, to to uh, segue in behind Liz is also you know I didn't hear anybody say anything about not cleaning the site. So I think as time goes on, we'll be able to uh, refine it. Uh, if there's, a, I, I think it's already been refined, and it's uh, and it's refining as we speak. So uh, hopefully, um, with a little more time too, it'll become much more uh, adaptable to the needs of the homeless. Anyhow, that's where I'm coming from. Um, uh, I'd like to make a quick comment about the CDC. My my understanding is that they were concerned that um, encampments be disbanded and the people distributed throughout the area instead of say, staying where they are. Thereby, if anyone had the virus, they would be spreading it. But they're not in their tents every day, all day. So they're uh -huh. out walking and spreading. Un understood, understood. That's, that's my, my concept of the CDC. If they're out of the tent during the day, you're not protecting them 
Yeah, because you, you, you all know what I'm saying. Any other comments on? Uh... Yeah, yes, sir. This is Mike. Okay, Mike. The bottom line is that the sanitation department has been coming out. They have been power washing all of those people who are living in tents mm -hmm. that want to be power washed to the extent that some uh, tents, uh, owners of tents, uh, residents of tents do not want to be power washed to the extent that the sanitation department determines by line of sight that there's an issue, they make it happen. If we, and the places are being clean. I have heard from Dexter that the sanitation department is following protocol and that we are not having issues at Sunset and Hampton. If we vote to, to favor mandatory sweeps, and this is exactly what it is. We're talking about a presence of police and that could cause an escalation of problems. We do not need that. The places are being kept clean. We do not have a problem in Venice. We've spoken tonight about all of the frequent cleanups, including on Thursdays. And I know on Oceanfront board, uh, Boardwalk, we have cleanups. This does not need to be done where we have comprehensive sweeps. It is bad for the people living in the tents. It is bad for the residents because we're gonna deal with escalation of a problem. If in fact, the tents, the tent encampments are not being taken care of. They're not being clean. They're causing hepatitis A. They're causing problems with personal property. Then at that point in time, we can better deal with the problem. But we're trying to deal with a serious problem that seriously does not exist today in our Venice. And I would say once again, we should vote in opposition to this mandatory comprehensive sweep. What, what's the difference between a cleanup and a sweep that you're saying you guys do, but it's not a sweep? Okay, a cleaning would be a soft cleaning and could be a power wash. So for example, Brian, one is in a tent, sanitation department comes up on a Thursday they want to clean all around the tent, they may do so. Somebody says, I don't want to have my, I don't want to move my tent and be dispossessed, which by the way means that they possibly will move two blocks to the west, the north, the south, or the east. So that doesn't accomplish anything for the people who want the tent encampments to be gone. Uh, so your comprehensive plan don't move tents. If in fact there's a problem with rodents or uncleanliness, the sanitation department, as I've been told by people on the ground, will go ahead and power wash anyway, making the tents wet, but it's done, it's completed. In other words, what I'm suggesting is based upon the people on the ground, things are being taken care of and it's being done on a voluntary basis by the people, the unhoused people that are living in the tents. Yeah. And we vote. Is that, is that a, um, 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 we have another, we have, we have a little time. Is that, is that in fact, um, What's going on? I mean, are they keeping uh, Brian? You're you're in touch with it a lot closer than I would be. I mean, I not seeing that. I don't uh, okay. see that as being uh, the case. I don't, I don't, which part of it is not the case? That the that the that the sites are being kept clean. Uh, you know that I don't see the unhoused. 
cleaning the place. And I, I'm not I'm not aware of that. I'm not seeing the result of it. I mean, the, the, I'm, certainly the, they are. Your, but. your visual eye, if you're driving by, it seems completely unclean. But yeah. inside tents and stuff, it's completely organized. So I do understand what you're saying uh, about not taking the tent down and displacing and making a move across the street. But I think if you have a square tent and everywhere around it, two or three feet all around it, all the gutters, I mean, there's there's trash. It's just thrown all outside of the tent that's not inside the tent that might be organized with their personal belongings. I don't really want to upset anybody that's in the tent and their and their area is is clean and orderly, but they take whatever food or whatever other and throw it out into the gutters and around their place. I think that's what everybody's talking about as far as cleaning. If the CDC guidelines said that you can't pick the person out of the tent because it's going to that's what Mike Bonin's holding his hat on. Uh, and if that's the rule that he can hold his hat on that, then that's the rule. But the, the neighborhood, people driving by, a lot of people just feel it's inhumane to allow people to have all the garbage, all the traps, all the rats, all within a few feet of where they lie down at night. And we're coming from a place of humanity and, and, and trying to help that. This is, not, this is nothing to do with being bad or, or thinking that we're hurting any of these people, you know, Stan and I are out knocking on them all, all the time. Um, but we got to, we have to clean and, and keep it clean. I'd like to employ everyone that's unemployed in every tent and let's get them on the, the payroll and start getting money to them to, to clean the streets yep. um, and help us. You know, none of the suggestions that we're going to put in this motion are going to mean anything when we send this letter. It's going to be whatever Mike wants to do, whatever sanitation is going to do. And until they change the rules, our committee is not going to do it. Like Vicki said, this is more of a reminder to them that we haven't lost track as residents and stakeholders of Venice, including maybe the homeless that are residents and, and stakeholders in Venice that might want it clean. This is just a reminder to them that we believe they're dropping the ball. All right, we're, we're, we're heading towards our uh, cutoff time now. So, um, um, I'd like to take it to a vote if, uh, unless uh, anybody. Frank, I, I know I see, uh, the, I see Chrysalis in the community every day, walking uh, in uniform with cleaning uh, supplies and trash cans, trash bags, et cetera. And when I have conversations with them, for some reason, they don't feel that it's their job to go near the encampments to help clean those areas. So I'm hoping we can engage uh, their leadership at some point because the Business Improvement District gave them a contract to clean a great portion of the area. So um, we need to look at their guidelines and look at their policies and find out why they're not willing to go near the encampments uh, in, in, the, in the targeted areas. Chrysalis is the, is, the, is the company. Frank, right. do, we to, do we have to change anything in order to add Sheila Kuehl's, uh, and the, or the supervisors to this in your- Well, I think, I think when we go to the, uh, when we go to the uh, board, we can uh, add that in. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this, uh, um, well, I would like to, uh, uh, go to a vote on this. Um, let's go. Uh, um, so let's vote. Um, we'll go down the line here. Um, <clears throat> okay, Brian? Yes. Mike? No. CJ? Yes. Liz? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Stan? Yes. Frank? Yes. All right, next motion, motion number two. Um, Again, I'll read the therefore down. 
Uh, this was uh, calling for immediate sheltering opportunities for the homeless population. This is submitted by Michael Rapkin and Frank Murphy. Frank, could you roll, scroll down uh, so we I'm can- sorry, I'm sorry, my Thank apologies. Yeah. And, make the print, and make the print better. <laughs> Bigger? Oh, you there. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of aging guys here. Let's see. How the hell? Come on, go away, go away. Well, you're just going to put your glasses on if you don't mind. You're fine. Just let's go. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, therefore, the following mo motion is made. The Venice Neighborhood Council and its Homeless Committee shall support efforts by local, state, and federal agencies and officials, as well as local service providers, to immediately reduce the growing unhoused population in Venice by advocating master leasing, shared housing, safe parking, rapid rehousing, pallet sh sheltering, and other similar accommodations. In addition, they shall seek to collaborate with other neighborhoods of CD11 to find ways to reduce homelessness and distribute the care and accommodations of homelessness throughout CD11 including but not limited to Venice. Uh, so, um, public comment. Well, let's go to motion. We got to make the motion first, and then and then uh, Mike wants second the motion. Anybody? I'll, I'll make the motion unless Mike wants to. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. Uh, now we go to public comment. Um, okay. um, same rules, same thing. 15 minutes, 15 people. Nine people have their hands raised. Can you tap out where that's at? Uh, no, Vicky? we have 10. Uh, Lisa will be the last one then. All right. Okay. So, uh, Let me... and if we, and we're going to go a minute at a time. So if we can, we'll accommodate a few extras. Okay, fine. Uh, first up is Venetian. Venetian. This happened several times with this person. Venetian, one more time. Well, we'll catch him at the end of his. Yeah, we'll try and get it again. Um, the phone number ending in 405, please. Phone number ending in 405. Hello. Hello. Okay, so hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Hello. Hear we can okay, hear. Okay, this is Venetian. This is Venetian, and Frank Murphy has purposely kept me muted because he does not want to hear what I have to say. You want to talk about solutions for the unhoused? Frank Murphy has been ignoring my emails about solutions since June. You know who had an unhoused young man at her house? Me. Because your homeless committee failed. I housed unhoused young adults from Venice in the pandemic. Frank Murphy. Okay? You want to talk about services? There is no intake. There are no assessments. You guys keep literally sucking each other's dicks and saying you guys are providing services and there's nobody on the ground. You guys didn't move everybody from Penmar. The people were moved from Penmar. You know where you push them? To the Sentinella underpass in Santa Monica. That's where you push them. Thank you we for a be real Thank right you. now. Uh, next up, writing, Eva. Hi, um, I want to say that I support this motion. I think it's been well thought out. I especially like that uh, they see that the, the rest of CD11 uh, has to work not, on, uh, not only with, with Mr. Bonnet, but with Venice, uh, because we are being overwhelmed. And collaborating with other CD11 to distribute care throughout, I think is really, really smart. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. 
Uh, next up, Carol Rains. Hi, yeah, I um, support this motion as well. Finally, some sensible um, talk about getting people housed. I listened to the VNC call and last month's homeless call and all of these people who can't use their real names like Cadillac and the real Erica, um, I don't know where you got the impression that Venice doesn't want to house people. It's quite the opposite. Unfortunately, we're under the grip of a councilman who refuses to take on anything but long-term, incredibly expensive solutions that will house a mere few. This has gotten to the point of a crisis, and like any crisis, it demands different solutions. And this is at the fault of our city council, not at the homeless committee. I don't know why you guys are taking this out on this committee. All they can do is make recommendations and listen to us as the stakeholders. So I urge the you, I urge Carol. the group. Thank you. Uh, next up, Peter Clune. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, in generally calling for additional housing, great, good, keep doing that. Um, I would say specifically with this motion, um, we'd just like to raise a concern sort of with the, the ideas sort of in the last sentence there. Um, I understand that, you know, we want to have services and housing across the entire city, um, but you need to be really careful about, you know, verging towards language that seems to call for the movement and displacement of our people out from Venice to outside of Venice. Um, these people live here, they're neighbors, they're residents, um, and we need to be able to provide them services and housing where they are. Um, and that means in Venice. I understand there's frustration and, you know, trying to push that outside, but, you know, the, the focus should be on providing the services here and not on trying to create sort of the idea that we need to, like, Thanks, push to other Thank places. Uh, Nick. You know, my, my problem with the, with the motion is that there's nothing here that talks about permanent housing. The use of the eminent domain seizure to get housing to fix the problem. Or the thousands and thousands of parcels of, of property that the city of Los Angeles owns that could be converted to permanent housing. This is all band-aid approaches. And this notion that the homeless have a God-given right to live in Venice for the rest of their lives, that's a really, that's a really a novel idea. So in other words, if you're a tenant and, you're, and, you're, and your rent gets raised, you have to move. Or if you, your house is foreclosed upon, you have to move. You know, no one has a God-given right to be anywhere. So let's stop with the fantasy and deal with the reality and let's build permanent housing and let's do it through limited domain seizure and through the parcels of property that Los Angeles already owns. Thank you, Nick. Um, Helen. Uh, yes, I support this motion. I particularly appreciate the comments that Carol Rains made. Um, I do think we need to look for, t for faster, quicker housing. And frankly, the focus on permanent housing has meant that people are stuck on the streets. And some of these people need more than just they need a safe housing that addresses their medical needs, their mental illness, and, and, or they need the housing they need for getting uh, sober. Um, I do not understand statements by people that say, just because you put a tent up in Venice, you're suddenly now a neighbor, you're a permanent resident. Uh, many of these people are transients when they're interviewed, they come from out of state, they've only been here a few months, doesn't make them permanently entitled to live in Venice. Frankly, it doesn't even make him permanently entitled to live in Los Angeles, as far as I'm concerned as a taxpayer. I don't think it's what we all voted for when we said we want to put the money out there to help these people. So please support this and uh, let's move on. Thank you, Helen. Uh, next up, Cadillac. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, first I just want to say, actually, my name is Cadillac. My parents fucking kick ass, and they gave me a sweet name. Secondly, um, I'll give you guys credit. This is a little bit better than, you know, your normal torturous, sadistic motions that Eva Braun Green writes for you. But I think it was given away at the end there with that last sentence and the fact that Nazis like Eva and Carol and Helen and uh, support the idea that we need to, yes, yes, we need to work with the other neighborhoods in CD11. And that's what this is about. You guys are trying, just like Carol said in her public comment, her trail of tears comment about pushing them into the Palisades. That's what this is about. It's a sneaky way for you guys to try and, you know, put this idea out there that you guys can just kick your unhoused neighbors into whatever neighborhood you decide. So I would get rid of that last part. That's garbage. And um, yeah, Nick, Staten Thank Island Nick is time. a Nazi. Thank you, Cadillac. Uh, Lisa Redman. Hi. Now, I can't go across against this because I want housing. Everybody wants housing. Uh, how This is how we solve homelessness, is housing. That's going to fix it. Um, what I do have a problem is, you know, how bland this is. It's kind of like, rah, rah, we all want housing. Well, of course we do. Um, <laughs> but let's be more specific. Let's go and really dig deep into it for the Venice unhoused stakeholders. Sorry, Nick, they are stakeholders. Why not explore options like what's with the parking lot on the Venice median? That's not gonna be a Reese Davidson for a few years before construction begins. That's wide open space. Why not look at a, taking away two holes from the golf course at Rose Penmar? That could be safe camping. That's my biggest problem right now is that we have to redistribute. As Carol says, we all want housing. Well, sure, we want housing, but we want it elsewhere. That's what Venice minutes. residents want. That is the Thank pure you. nimbyism. Thank you, Lisa. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, five more people. No, four. Want to go with those, Frank, and cut it off? Let's do the four. Okay, Mr. Goat Puppet. <laughs> yes. Oops. Yes, what, what are those two reasons? Well, the first reason is, have you seen the people that play at Penmar? Jesus Christ, they can't fucking hit the ball for the fucking life of them, so they should give up the game. And number two, you have all those pretty spaces, and you can put thousands of pallet houses. Imagine, we could put all the homeless in the city right in Penmar, build an 11-foot wall with a moat, complete with alligators. This is a great thing, and the Venice Neighborhood Council is responsible yeah. for this debate. This is a wonderful thing. And thank you to Joe Buscaino for helping you develop all these motions. Uh, his child, actually, his kids wrote all these motions. You're just signing them. Did he? Yes. Joey Buckets for thank mayor. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Buckett. Um, next up, uh, Kate Milner. Hello. I just want to stress, I'm. this motion makes sense. In writing, like everything else that's been presented tonight, the mechanics of it are not compassionate or realistic for people who it affects. For those who called earlier, Venice, Marina, Redondo were all communities that were settled by Black people. Before that, this is native land. You don't have a right to claim any property, any right to land in Venice. That includes Helen or whoever else was calling. Please, as a neighborhood council, stop giving space to gentrifiers who are actually racist. Not they have any rights, any land they're on. Many people who are unhoused stay in the neighborhood they're from or familiar with. This entire town, Los Angeles, is a town of transients. Whether you come from a suburb in Kansas to be an actress and move to Venice Beach and be a barista, 
you're still a transient. You're Thank not from time. Here. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Venetia. That's got it, Vicki. That's the four. Well, what do you got? I've got about Venetian has been. I've asked three times. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah. But Mike, sure. but Mike Bravo has his hand up, and I don't well, we, have, we have we have to call it when we when uh, we get to the end of the clock. So we've gone over the clock by quite a bit. Uh, so okay. I would say then I, it's your call, calling. Frank. I'm just running the just yep. doing this. So. Yep. What do you have? Two more. No, we got seven more. Yeah, the people, well, they're re-raising their hands now, some people. So it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I would say go ahead with the one person that kept raising their hands and never was able to get through. Well, I, I, one more time, Venetian, one more time. Are you there? Venetian. No, not no. there. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to uh, committee um, discussion. Uh, so we're going to uh, clock that in at 15 minutes also. So um, who wants to get started? I'm happy to do so. Okay, Michael. Over the years, uh, there's been efforts to prevent shelters, a bridge home, and permanent supportive housing. It's failed or it's been delayed in the opening of them up. And that is why I brought this motion. The Homeless Committee, in my opinion, needs to make an unequivocal statement that it supports various methods to immediately reduce the homeless population. And that is all that this motion does. Uh, I could have been more specific because I would like to see safe parking and shared housing and master leasing. And perhaps we definitely need more supportive housing but it's not in here. I just want a statement that makes it clear that the Venice Neighborhood Council once and for all has to make a stand to support it and to advocate for the immediate support of housing. And I should add, it is not my intention to move Venice residents that are living in tents and on the streets under sleeping bags to move to other neighborhoods but to reduce the homelessness, we need to consider and we should consult with other neighborhoods within CD11. Thank you. I'd like to just um, segue in behind what Michael said. Um, I think it's real, real important that we, um, that we uh, get the unhoused folks off of the street. It's the most dangerous, uh, inhumane thing I've ever seen where we persist in that's the space they have to, to populate. What they're need, they're, they, have to, they have to sleep somewhere and we're putting them on a curb next to a roadway, the cars are going down there at 50 miles an hour, 40 to 50 miles an hour, trying to make a, a yellow light. And people are sleeping there and they're having issues there, et cetera, et cetera. This is just, this is insane. And so this is something that we need to address. And so I have no problem working with, uh, you know, uh, that that that's the that's the crux of my of my uh, participation here is this has got to stop. Anyhow, that's my thing. 
And there are many op there are many opportunities other than that that are not being taken advantage of, and that's a uh, that's a travesty. So I want to thank I want to thank Michael for bringing the motion. I'm just sitting here. Um, I'm humble, um, but I'm excited to be a part of this committee because I don't think folks realize that we are volunteering to try to put our best foot forward to help our fellow human beings, unhoused, homeless, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but these are human beings that we're talking about. And here we are on a call to try to put our best foot forward. Do we have all the answers? No. But I want folks to realize that we are a volunteer group and can only make recommendations to the elected officers of the Venice Neighborhood Council. So when you guys come on this line and start going off on uh, 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 volunteers, uh, it's really an insult because, you know, at the end of the day, you, we're saying Mike Bynum, but we also have the Venice Neighborhood Council elect that we have to make these recommendations to. So I, I just want to thank Michael and Frank for even bringing the motion. And I think this committee is going to do some phenomenal work around the unhoused population in Venice. So I'm going to support the motion. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to support it. Because at the last paragraph, it talks about collaboration. And that's what it's going to require for us to solve a very complex problem. It's not just on city council. It's not just on the county supervisor. It's not just on the Venice Neighborhood Council folk. It's not just on these grassroots committees or grassroots organizations. It's on everybody, including those who is unhoused to be engaged in this conversation. Okay, so with that being said, I'm just humble to be here, but I'm excited and I think we're gonna do some great work around this issue. And uh, somebody mentioned that we're not on the ground. I have to beg your pardon, uh, not only I, uh, but my agency is on the ground. We are sacrificing our lives to be on the ground. We, we have a, a whole team that's on the ground. I, I'm on the ground every single day. I'm in tears practically every day seeing my loved ones and my cousins and my homeboys in tents. These are people that I'm not trying to hog the mic, but I'm passionate about this. These are people that I went to school with, man, that's now living in tents. So you, you think that does not rattle my emotion when I see beautiful men that I went to school with or hung out with is now stuck behind this disease called, called, called MET? And this is part of the problem we don't want to address, okay? So with that being said, man, I, I love you guys. I love you, Frank, and you know it, man. You invited me to this for a reason. I'm not going to be holding my tongue, but I'll be back on the ground tomorrow for those of you who want to join me. Okay, come on out and, 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 and let's really engage because right now we have, well, I have at my disposal, and Brian knows this, every from Hampton, no, better yet, from the boardwalk all the way back to, I would say, uh, Lincoln. There's individuals right now, if I show it up and say, hey, we would like to engage you guys in helping clean up your own home. These people will be so excited to hear that conversation, be like, yeah, Stan, let's go, let's make it happen. So with that being said, Frank, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you guys. Um, but this is, this is dear to my heart, man. I don't know if you guys have people that's in them tents that you went to school with. I don't know if you guys have cousins out there or loved ones that you have spent a lot of time with that's now on that level of life. But this stuff keeps me up at night. And when I see them, man, I, it, it breaks me down. So I, I am indebted to help this population at all costs. So we have to put everybody on notice, whether it be the, uh, the, the, the council person, whether it be the neighborhood council, for everybody need to be put on notice that we have a pandemic and it's not COVID-19. It's human beings that have lost their way in society and they're living in my neighborhood called Venice, California. Thank you. Sorry for taking up all the mic, man. <laughs> you already know, Frank, how it goes. So. No, you did a good job. I'll just second what you said. 
like we're ready to take a vote. Ready to vote? I am. All right. Let's do it. And I will be inviting some of the unhoused, Frank, to our meeting. So since we heard that, we will have some in, in, in our committee with us. Great. Thanks, Dan. We next week? Very well. Unhoused. Uh, okay. Uh, member of this Brian? Uh, committee. Hang on, uh, Frank. Mike's talking. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, it, uh, it was mentioned earlier by, by Lisa Redmond that at least twice now we've had, uh, I believe we passed a motion to, ha to have a- Let's talk about that at committee comments. Let's finish the motion. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, all right, uh, Brian? Yes. Mike? Yes. CJ? Yes. Liz? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Stan? Yes. Frank? Yes. All right. That's number two. Um, we'll go to uh, any old business. I didn't allow a lot of time down here, but we had old business and new business. Are there any um, any comments? And then we'll have committee comments after that. Well, old, old business is dealing with getting a homeless representative on this committee. Because all right, that's a good yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, not before Stan, you're out yeah. there every day more than anybody on this committee. Yes, sir. And, and would love to have you put a name or two people um, that you think would be uh, uh, new valuable members. Uh, Absolutely. As, as passionate about it as you you showed us all tonight. Absolutely. I was with some of them today, and I actually mentioned it to them. I really didn't want to. Uh, press too hard because this is my first meeting. Uh, but now that I see what we're dealing with, I would definitely uh, be inviting some of those individuals to join us. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. okay. I look forward to that. Thank There's you. a process, but it's 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 good. We we want to talk to as many as we can. Yeah, and we also need to remember that um, you, you know if you're homeless, you have demands that are other than what you and I have, we're a little bit more in control of our schedule, so to speak. Um, and what we were finding in previous meetings was if we had somebody that was available, they may not be available at that time. And so the only caveat that, that hangs out there is that we need to be able to identify the person three days prior to the meeting in order to have them on the agenda. Why, why can't we, we Tom, why can't we just put one person on it? They're on for the rest of the year. And if- they, Well, that's because uh, they may or may not be able to make meetings. Um, that, um, that happens, but if there's a three meeting minimum or whatever, or two meeting, you missed two or you missed three, whatever, how to, with Charles or whatever we did, I mean- well. That's part of the thing where I want to say I wouldn't want to put the pressure on somebody to say you have to be here every month or you have to be here every they, they, other they, month or whatever. They, the unhoused are smart people. They there are people that that are responsible. That can, I'm not saying I'm not saying otherwise, Brian. I, I, you I, know, I, um, I I just think we need to get the right person. Whether you know, and you talk to two or three or four candidates. Express yes. that it is a time commitment, and let's see how they do when we're talking to three or four different people. That's the discussion that I've had with Stan over over the last several uh, months, actually. So yes. why, don't, why don't you and Stan referee the who you think would do it? Make a presentation to the committee like we always do, or talk, you know, go through the the, the roll call and figure out why we're going to bring somebody on. But let's let's do it. Yeah, no, we can do it. We can do it. Okay, I just, just wanted to point that out. Now we can go to new business. Okay. <laughs> Good. And, uh, well, committee comments. Um, 
Um, I think all the new business is sort of committee comments. Does anybody have any more comments they want to throw out there? I want to put a shout out to, uh, um, it's a group down on, on the boardwalk, uh, uh, Renaissance. I don't know if you guys heard of this group, but they uh, done a- Who is that, Stan? Sorry, I missed it's that. It's called Renaissance. They're down, they, they done a, 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 a a Thanksgiving event down there and fed um, several of the unhoused. And it was a nighttime event on a Friday. I think it was November 20th. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to acknowledge them because that's the kind of work right there that we all need to be involved in and collaborating with those type of groups is gonna make this committee even stronger. So um, I actually invited one of the uh, co-chairs, I believe she's still on the line, but just that, that piece right there was hot meals, man. It was. It was beautiful. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to them. Excellent. And Frank, that you, was actually, the, you came by, you came by. That yeah, evening. yeah, that, I, I think I met the woman that you're talking about. I'm, I'm, you introduced me to several folks. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I'd like to kind of suggest something for the future um, and that's, I know it's probably being done everywhere else, but as a committee and as the community of Venice, I think it would be good for us to do some research. I know a couple of years ago, we had a couple of presentations at our homeless committee meeting, you know, about the, um, the new small quick uh, houses that can be put up. Uh, you had a word for them. Um, but I think it would do us well to have some of us do some research on what the possibilities are, you know, even to the point of what the costs are, what they need. And so we can bring it out in the open that there are things better than $700,000 per room um, as far as building goes. Um, and I think it would do us good to look at that as going toward the future. Um, and that's just my suggestion. I hear you. Any other comments? Yeah, Frank, I'd, I'd really love to hear, um, you know, the major service providers, um, that are here in our, in Venice, like the, uh, the CEO of St. Joseph's Center or the CEO of PATH or the CEO of Venice Neighborhood Count or Venice Community Housing come and do a five minute presentation of what it is that they think they're doing for, for homeless in, in Venice. The responsibility of their contracts and what they're, they're contracted to do. Um, uh, how many people are they required to house? How many people do they, where are they putting people? Just more, more of the mechanics of what happens because people come to this committee and, and have strong opinions with us, but we're not the people that are out on there uh, making the decisions based on the contracts that they've been awarded. So it would be great to kind of get a state of the union from the major players. I mean, St. Joseph Center is responsible for this entire community. Um, and we should probably hear from them as yeah. to what, where they stand in our community. Uh, the president of the chairman of LASA, uh, the board, is, there's a, Wendy, Wendy Gruel is now the, the chairman of, of LASA's uh, board. Be great to hear what they do because they control the contracts in our city. And those are the individuals I think we should hear from. There was a LASA representative uh, at the Mar Vista. Um, I think it was not Mar Vista, it was um, West Side. I'd like to see the, uh, see, I'd like to see the about, CEOs. About a week ago. Um, and they did a very good presentation. Yeah. Um, and sure. oh, we were all invited. I don't know if anybody went, but that's the kind of thing that would, you know, a half an hour of our meeting for a report would be really good. Yeah. Different people. I like that. I like that a lot. But we have had lots of people in various meetings over here. I think Brian has a great point. Let's talk to the people who understand the contracts. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's the, the CEO. I mean, it's great to get a field deputy. Yes. Or 
I, th- I love Dexter. He's great. He's doing it. It would obviously be great if Mike Bonham was on this call with us and we were talking to him. But, you know, we have Dexter, we have Nisa, and it's great. They're, they're cool. But I think Dexter's not holding a contract and Nisa's not holding a contract. The money that's going out to, to Lhasa, the money that goes to St. Joseph Center, the money that goes to those providers that are responsible for the day-to-day outreach on the street stands out there. I mean, you have the volunteer groups of, of, of LA Watch and all the we care and all the people that we know are out there is advocating. But where are the people that are getting paid to be out there? What's the mm-hmm. status with them? What about the outreach teams that are out there every day? Who are the yep. people that are filling out the CES applications, the coordinated entry system? What do you do uh, a coordinated entry system when you're out there and you fill out the 22 pages or whatever it is that they have to fill out? What do you tell them? What are you going to be back to housing? How, how does that work? And so I think our community as a whole would like to know how these organizations execute their contracts. I think to add to what Brian said, Frank, we should get the, the business improvement district leadership uh, in a conversation because they too have uh, uh, given out contracts to provide safety and cleaning. So you got Ally Security, which is a nationally known security firm who have staff, none of them which is from the community, no local hiring uh, policies. They ride around on bikes all day and they look at people and they probably making $20 an hour. And then you have Chrysalis who is local in Santa Monica, but they have no, I have not seen not one local person hired to clean up the area. So I think we should engage day leadership as well and find out really what's going on. Where, Where is this money going at the end of the day? Yep. Yeah, just what are the outcomes? I agree. What do you get for the what do you get for the money? Yeah, it's roughly thirty five thousand dollars per person per year of service money. Four hundred and seventy four yeah. million was distributed by the county to the nonprofit world. It's a lot of money, and and we're getting more people instead of helping more people. Who's in charge of getting people into detox? Who's in charge of, of answering the bell when someone wants to go immediately into housing? Who's the one? Who makes those decisions on those teams? I know who's doing it right now. Stan's doing it. <laughs> we just had a murder tonight yeah. Yeah. on the boardwalk, and I guarantee you this. Ally Security is nowhere around that site. I bet you my team is there, though. I'm waiting for a call as we speak because we're contracted through the mayor's office to provide gang intervention services. So you know, at the end of the day, it's just something that we need to be um, talking about and addressing. The security, the public safety uh, dollars is coming and going out of our community. Yeah. Yeah. We sit on the LAPD advisory board and it's a mess. These cops, you know, they've cut their thing and yet they're still supposed to answer the phone and go and, and go to these disputes where there's mental health and all the things, everything that was supposed to be defunded. They're still the people that have to answer the phone and go. You know, so let's hold these, let's hold accountable to the people that are actually having contracts and hear from them. I think that's a great idea. And I'd love to see Felicia Adams, uh, CEO of uh, St. Joseph Center attend next month's meeting to discuss what you've mentioned, uh, uh, Brian, but also I think it would be good to hear her vision as to how we can immediately uh, help reduce the unhoused population. Well, that's a standard. That's a standard speech. How we're going to do it because they're doing it, and that's how they have the contract. Let's talk about how they implement and deal on a day-to-day basis with the people that are on the street. I don't want to hear what the the you know the motion that we put right here that we're going to house everybody. Yeah, that's the intention. That's what everybody wants to do. But what are we actually doing? I don't want to hear their vision. I want to hear what's going on. Exactly. That's what I said. I want to hear her vision. And other, I don't want to hear the vision. I want to hear what's happening. I want to know how we can reduce the unhoused population today and not next year. Okay. Well, supposedly that answer has already been given, Mike. They have a contract. All right. And that contract is based on what that decision was to, to implement what exactly what you're talking about. All right. So now let's hear what that contract says and how they're doing it. Because That's- we don't know. We don't know what it is. That's all well and good, the contract, but that doesn't mean that we should not isolate her vision, which may not be in the contract. Well, she, that's how she got the contract. All of us volunteers know. 
I'd like to hear what she has to say. You know, I like her. She's a friend. I'm not saying. Well, I'd like to. I think. I think uh, both of your points are well taken. I mean, yes, you have a vision, but we want to know what's the practical result of that the, the vision, vision and how's it being implemented. So the, is the RFP they responded to to get the contract to begin with. All right, that's the vision. All right. So I think we can house the question. Or we can frame the question, Brian, in a way that uh, that uh, um, takes that into account. Yeah. And I, I mean, think we should. I think I think uh, Mike, um, you know, if you have a contact with her, and uh, if you Brian have a contact with her, if we can put uh, put you guys in touch with her and see if she can make it to a meeting, and we'll frame a question so that both of you get the answers you need to, you know, you need to. Uh, hear. I think it's just a, she's a guest speaker. We have one or two of these guest speakers at each meeting, you know. Because the neighborhood needs to be informed of the people that yeah, are actually responsible. We're getting yelled at as if we're the responsible group. We're not. Okay. The people that are responsible have the contracts. I and understand. Everybody in the Venice stakeholders and the whole community wants to know how are we enforcing these contracts? I understand. Okay. Um, so uh, just as a plan of action is that uh, something that uh, um, Mike you can reach out or facilitate I can put me in touch whatever I will or be very happy to contact Felicia Adams you know St. Joseph Center I have a somewhat of a personal relationship with her all, I, okay. all I would need to know is that person you know the date, of the, the date of the next meeting and uh, uh, I guess to know the scope of what she's going to discuss. So maybe offline, I can discuss that with Brian. Sure. Yeah. Or we can have a call with her or we can go see her, Mike. I'm happy to go visit. Or I'll set up a conference call. Okay. That sounds like a plan. All right, guys. Thank you. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you, Thank Frank. You. Thanks, everybody. You guys take care. Thanks, all. Stay safe. Thank you. Good job, Thanks Vivian. Us, Dan. Good job. Okay. Take care, guys. We Frank, Frank. Beautiful, the Vicky. About beautiful. The of the timing was really good. Beautiful, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky and Frank. Glad to help. Did good. Happy Thank holiday. you. Thank you, guys. This was and good Thanks. to see you. Likewise. You guys take care. Take care. And good to see you. You guys take care. We're getting bigger and bigger <laughs> as, as people leave. Yeah, right. Well, that went that went really well, guys. Thanks a lot, and that was that was good. That that was handled really well tonight. Thanks. Thanks, guys.